Hello and welcome to our weekly boxing chat on Sky Sports News. I'm Andy Scott. I'm joined by Barry Jones, plus a fighter who's building quite a collection of world title belts. It's two-weight world champion Natasha Jonas. Now, I'm delighted that I had the opportunity to say they're not mine and Barry's belts there, but what a collection. You keep adding to them. Just uh, over a week since you beat Candy Wyatt to, to add the IBF in a second weight division. Um, how do you reflect on the whole thing? Yeah, I think there's, there's no... Yeah, I was, it was a fight I was supposed to win and sometimes I felt like that adds pressure to me. Um, I wanted to go out, get a good performance, have a good start and show something that I, I haven't shown before and I think I, I think I did that. Trainer Joe Gallagher, the whole week, any time there was a talk about what might be next, where this journey's going, you go, whoa, 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 <laughs> let's just stop this now. You know, you've got to get past Candy Wyatt. Um, you've had that before in your career with fights you've been expected to win. It, it, do you actually need that fear that fear of losing, that pressure that it could all go wrong? 100%. I think, um, like I say before, with Vivian Obanoff, I've kind of overlooked it and looking past what, what was coming next and so quickly in, in boxing, doors shut and every single door that was open before that fight shut after it. And so it was all about, you know, keep staying concentrated, staying focused, getting the win and, and keeping all the options that are open still open. There were times in your career I wondered... Um, if, if you would just be someone that was really good in that generation of great fighters and you wouldn't become a, a world champion in, in a single weight division, now to do it in two weight divisions uh, must make you incredibly proud of, your, of yourself. Yeah, I think it's um, a testament to myself, um, my attitude to Joe and all the hard work we do behind the scenes and to all the lads in the gym that drag me through sessions when sometimes the last place I want to be is there. Barry, uh, you know, Tasha, she doesn't necessarily blow her own trumpet too much, but it is an incredible achievement, especially, you know, she's probably getting a little bit annoyed at me about me keep saying it, but when you put it in the context of the defeats to Terry Harper and Katie Taylor, um, being the nearly fighter, uh, to go on and do this now has been incredible. More than just to go on and regroup and win a world title, it's to go four weights up, because they're lightweight, but she was a career super featherweight. Go four weights up, which seemed like madness to everyone, except for, for you and Joe. But to do that and then win a world title and then, then drop back down to, to welterweight and pick up another one, it, it's, 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 it's dare to dream stuff, isn't it, really? And it, and it, and it, it screams greatness. You have to be honest about that. It does, you know, not, not many fighters can have, have the, the guts and the belief to come back from defeats. That's, that's the one thing. But to, to do it in weights where you, shouldn't, where you don't really belong, let's be honest, there's any weight you can make from, from lightweight up, up to, to, to super, super welter and you chose the highest one, which is just... But you did it, and you did, it and and if anything, you look better at the higher weights than you did down at, at super featherweight. You gave me the death stare in the ring afterwards when I said, "What's next?" And you said, "Let me have a holiday." So I've given <laughs> you, look, I've given you seven, eight, nine days. So where are we going next with this? So you, there's no secret that we're on this journey, and there's only a couple of stops left before yeah. you coast off into retirement um, and join us on the safe side of the ropes. Are you looking to finish your career with the biggest names possible, and if so, who? Yeah, I think I've, I've like I've. I seen at the, afterwards that Clarissa was shouting my name. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a fight. I mean, that interests me. She's a one of the biggest names, if not pound for pound, best in the sport. Um, the Chantal Cameron fight also is is a door that's open. Katie Taylor, I'd love to get a, a, a revenge, one revenge win against Katie, and and they're all huge fights. So you know, there is other fights that are out there. Um, McCaskill being one. Uh, the Ryan being another, you know, Lauren Price, I think, is another. Um, but I, I, I'll just choose the best fights for me. I, I do need peace for me to be able to walk off into the sunset and be happy with what I've done in boxing. So, Well, the first name out of your mouth there was the quote Clarissa Shields. Now, she was ringside in Manchester uh, and she was less than complimentary about you. Let's have a, a, a listen. I'm going to get your reaction here. We'll play you back what the quote had to say. Were you looking at that, licking your lips? Would you fancy a girl, Natasha Jonas? I think Natasha Jonas was right to decline to fight with me. She'll get knocked out by me. Great performance by her, though, but skill level, speed, everything. I'm, I don't know what Candy Wyatt was here to do, but she did it, and she got stopped. But you can't mention me and Natasha Jonas' name in the same sense. I offered her to fight at 154. She didn't want it. She's fighting at 47 now, but... I mean, I'm writing down notes there, but really, <laughs> I just want to get your reaction. Levels apart, 
It, good job knock you didn't fight her because she'd uh, knock you out. Like, who has she knocked out? Let's be honest. Um, levels apart. Maybe in weight levels apart. Um, but we're getting closer. She said she'll come down to 147. Let, let, let's see how I put her money where her mouth is. Let's see if she does. Well, Barry said it was, it was the max of, of your sort of uh, where you would be prepared to go to. She said she would fight you at 154. She said if she boxer... said that before, but Dimitri Salas has also said she, we want to do it at a catch weight at 156 because she couldn't make the 154. So now she's saying she'll do 147. That's, that's not what her own team is saying. So there's lots of contradictions in what she says. Would she knock you out? <laughs> I've got to ask these questions. Help me out, Barry, help me out over here. Help me out. Did you know bed, mate? You know, she, she said I, she'd knock you out there. Yeah. It's not what she does, though. <laughs> it's not what she does. She's, you know, she's a tremendous boxer. She's athletic. She's, she has great judgment of the distance. A fantastic jab, Chris Shields. Throws lots of punches in bunches. But power is not really on the top of the, of the list of what the good things she does. So I'm going to be on a hit list for saying that, you know. That. Well, it is what it I, is, I you know. But be more confident. Barry's all right. He's on a number of hit lists. Don't worry. <laughs> but she's brilliant at what she does, and, and she is the greatest of all time. You have to say that to this point. But but the power is is not that wouldn't be the issue. All the other things would be the problem for you, I think. But that the power wouldn't be it. Uh, it's social media today has been interesting. Um, Chantel Cameron. Uh, who I think I could, could say pretty much is a friend of yours, yeah, yeah. Uh, undisputed at 140. She is slated to, to match uh, Katie Taylor again, um, who's obviously undisputed at 135. But she said that she would... I, I can't quite understand the tweet, and we've, we've argued about it yeah. off air, but do you get the impression she was very clear in that tweet that was obvious that she would be willing to face you next year for all the belts and look to become uh, undisputed in two weight classes? Yeah, it's, it's something that we've spoken about um, personally between us two because I, I didn't want to be saying her name and here for, it to, for her to take her offensive. So I called her and said, look, this is how, how I feel. I don't know if you feel the same. And she was like, no, 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 I, I agree. Like, There's no animosity. There's no, it'd be a great fight for us both and it is what it is. We haven't spoke about fighting or about anything like that. It was just like, I didn't want her to feel offended that I, like, I would feel like I'd call, I was calling her out because it wasn't, it wasn't spe specifically like that. So that's why I phoned and had that conversation. But I think it, it is a great fighter and she, you know, she's arguably one of the best fighters on our shores. Um, she's defeated, you know, an unde undefeated champion, um, undefeated disputed champion and an undisputed champion in Jess McCaskill. And I don't think she gets the tear flowers that she deserves because she's a great fighter. Yeah, very well said. Um, I want to ask you about Callum Smith. It's just over a month until he faces Arta Betabiev in Canada. Three world titles on the line. I know you're trying to get on the plane yourself with <laughs> us. Um, you've trained alongside Callum for years. It's a huge ask, but can he do it? Callum can do it. Um, is it going to be tough? Yeah, and he knows that. We've had experience of going through you know, Callum Johnson camps with, with it and the fights that he's had. And Callum's a bit of a freak of nature. He's so big and uses his, he's got such long levers, but it's probably his bent arm shots that are his most dangerous. And, you know, if there's, there is anyone out there that can hurt him, as we can see, his knockout reel is tremendous. The, um, it is, Barry, it is a tremendous knockout reel. They are highlight reel knockouts, nearly every single one of them. The catch counters, um, I mean, this was for the European title, but stick a pin in any of them. Uh, they're incredible, but he's facing a man yeah. with a formidable... Not a great, a formidable knockout ratio he in is. Betabiev. And what, what Callum does so well is the catch and count. He blocks and hits with the same hand. Can you do that when, you, when you're blocking the, the power of, of Betabiev? That's going to be the big question. And also the pressure that he puts on you with the front foot without closing the distance. Too close you can throw punches. Oh, oh, oh Callum close, oh, copes with that's going to be the biggest problem for him. But he's long. He has a good jab, Callum, and he can't fight in close, but it's you gotta get that mid-range distance gonna, is gonna be the problem for him. If if better be if can get close enough to him to let those those right hands go, or certainly those left hooks, then it's gonna be a hard night for Callum. It scares me even watching the the footage here. Um, but did Anthony Yard, albeit in defeat, in a stoppage defeat, show some some signs of weakness there in Better Beev, that there is a way through if you if you have the right game plan and you are disciplined and you have a good night. Definitely. And I think Callum is, you know, since going up in weight, has become stronger. Um, and I think even Callum Johnson showed that he can be hurt. Um, again, albeit he came back and 
and, and won the fight, but he, he showed that he, he has his vulnerable sides. Not every fighter is perfect, nowhere near, and everyone can be hurt, everyone can be in trouble, and you just need to have one good night, that's it. Barry, I know you love talking about the, the heavyweight queue. Uh, we're finally getting moving. We are, we are moving. Um, Usyk Dubois had their press conference in, in Poland yesterday, and there's one, I think, in London later in the week. But Anthony Joshua and Dillian White, in their rematch, had a press conference yesterday. You went down there. Um, there was, I think, maybe a little bit more respect, a bit older and wiser, the two of them. But are you expecting another dramatic battle? It'll be a great fight, and it's the fight they both need, I think. For, for Dillian White, he needs to get back to that top five, I, saw, I would think. And, and Anthony Joshua certainly in that in that group. And for, and for Anthony Joshua, it's the fight he needs to show that he still has a little bit of what he used to have, that, that raw aggression, that power, you know, that, that menacing figure that he used to be when he reigned as, as champion of the world. And I think Dillian White will bring that out to him. If, if anyone, they're the perfect dance partners for, for what they need right now. So I think it'll be a good fight. But the press conference wasn't so great, I can't be honest. They were, they were too subdued. And Dillian was so calm, and that's not no, that's not the Dillian we know. We want him being erratic and, and wild, and but I think it'll spice up as, it, as as the fight gets close. But it, it's it's an interesting fight. It's, it, it, it's not it, there's nothing on the line as such, except for their you know respect for both and their little you know, their little rivalry. But apart from that, it's a good fight for either one, and it's the fight they need. And that's the most important part. And if I just ask you a quick one, Barry, on, on Dillian, do you feel that he is in a position where? Yes, he could lose the fight, but he's got nothing to lose in terms of um, what he's got to prove to everybody. And, and that might help him. The pressure perhaps is shifted to AJ. The focus is perhaps a little bit more on AJ now. Dillian White can go in there without that sort of pressure on his shoulders and the underdog mentality might suit him. Yeah, I think he, he, he engineers that, whoever he's fighting. That's, that's, that's his spirit. But I think for Joshua, the pressure's always on him, always. He's always the A-side because he's the biggest name, always. And so wherever he fights, and so it's, he always has that pressure, the expectation. It's always on him to put on the big performance. And if he doesn't, he gets criticised. And it'll be the same with this fight. He can't just beat, I mean, a win's imperative. But I mean, he can't just beat Dillian White. He has to beat him in, in, in emphatic fashion. And, and I think the way Dillian fights, I think there's only one conclusion there. I think someone gets stopped because of the way he fights. He'll force Joshua to fire back. Well, thank you for coming down. Uh, I think in the ring you said to me, let me have a holiday. So will you now get away on holiday uh, before we, we get a chance to see you again? We've got two. We've got two plans. I'm away with my friends and their kids going to France and then a little um, safari with my daughter in Tanzania. Tanzania safari with Mila. And, and uh, has her feet hit the ground yet? Because she was bouncing around uh, up in <laughs> Manchester, living it with you, which was great to see. Yeah, she enjoys it. She, when, I'm, when I'm on a diet, she's on a diet. When I'm in the gym, she's in the gym. She spent two half terms and an Easter holiday in Champs Camp in Moss Side, so she deserves it as much as I do. Well, once again, thanks for coming down. Make sure you don't forget any of these belts. You've worked hard enough to get them. That's all we've got time for this week. My thanks to Barry and Tasha. That huge clash between Betabiev and Smith draws ever closer. Can Callum defuse the explosive KO King? I think it's highly anticipated that somebody's getting knocked out. I've always been a big believer in the best version of me turns up. I can beat anyone on the planet. Archer better be up. He's knocked out every opponent that he's faced. He punches with bad intention. Archer better be up. Is now the three belt world champion at light heavyweight. Oh my goodness. This crowd is stunned. The next person that goes up against better be up, his ring IQ is going to have to be up there. You know, got a good boxing brain at the highest level, the smallest mistake can lose you the fight. Toe to toe here, and Callum Smith, he's a predatory finisher when he gets a man going. Callum Smith with the power, he can become a light heavyweight champion. The dream's still alive.